This is Coogan Cassius for the Cassius and Helder Show here on Fox Nation. With me, I've got trainer Joe Gallagher. Joe, welcome. How are welcome, you? Coogan. Cheers, yeah. Thank you, you. Right? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Joe, just, you know, um, for people who don't know, talk to me a little bit about how you started off into the training world in boxing. How did it come about for you? Well, I've been involved in sports since I was 10 years old. Boxed as an amateur for Woodenshaw Forum under Jimmy Egan. Then I went to uh, Moss Side when I was 17 and boxed for Phil Martin. Um, Age 22, 23, Phil asked me to take over his amateur club, his amateur side of it, while he was training the professionals. Obviously, Phil Martin and Champs Camp, notoriously famous for the four British champions at once. And uh, that was it. And I run the Moss Side Amateurs as the glove. So, Phil Martin gave me a break into coaching, and I couldn't have had a, a better tutor. He was there in the day training the pros, and I was working in the office in the day and working and helping Phil alongside in the days with the pros and running the amateurs of a night time. How much of a disadvantage or advantage is it to become a trainer that hasn't boxed before, professionally? That's Manuel Stewart never boxed professionally. Jose Marino never played in a World Cup final. That's just silly. That it's just, 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 just doesn't mean that Diego Maradona didn't become the best thingy, and I'm sure Mike Tyson didn't become a world class trainer neither. So. Everyone finds a niche in life and some people can get the point across most probably in coaching or teaching better way than practicing it themselves. So yeah, that, that, that doesn't make no difference at all. I had like 60 odd amateur contests, being around one of the best professional gyms that has been in Britain. So I've had a, a good education. From all the people that you've trained uh, up until now, um, who have you been more, more, most excited about? Oh, I don't know. Listen. There's lots of kids, Levi Chu, my first national champion. Um, he won the schoolboys the same year as uh, Ricky Hatton and David Barnes. They were the three big kids coming through Manchester at the time. Channel 4 did a documentary, really good talent. But like a lot of kids, when they get to 17, 18, they have to get work, they discover girls, they drink. And it was just a shame we lost Levi. I was really excited about him. Then Owen Trainer, two ABA final, twice ABA finalist. He was a really good kid. Foster coming through, two ABAs. Joe Murray, John Murray, kids from scratch. And of late, so when I started working with Matthew Macklin, winning the British European and then Sturm was good. The Smiths, God, getting to work with the Smiths is a pleasure every day. And then obviously Anthony Crawlers. I, I cannot pull one out singly. I think I'm blessed and privileged to be able to train each one of the kids because I'm sure any other trainer in the country would open them up at open arms and to get the likes of kids that are boxed well in the GB school like Scotty Cardle, Callum Smith. Callum Johnson, it's, uh, it's an honour that they choose me to uh, train them. The level of coaching uh, in England or the UK in the last 10 years, has it substantially grown in your opinion? I think it's always been there. I think we've always just seemed to look over. Listen, there's great trainers in this country, has been over the years. The Ingalls by far, the standouts, Jimmy Tibbs, Johnny Eames. Um, through the years, obviously, Cal Zaggy did fantastic with East Stable. Um, like I said, Billy Nelson up in Scotland, the, 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 the Graham Everett down there, the, the level of training and um, trainers and the, the quality of them uh, have been over the years. I think we just seem to have looked to America with rose tinted glasses and we get drawn in by the twang and the speech and the, the, the sayings that they say in the corner and stuff like that. But if you look at, obviously, you see Kyle Zaggy, his dad, and you see Adam Booth and you see Jimmy Tibbs and We've had some Billy Graham, we've had some fantastic trainers over the years, and I just feel we're getting the chance to put it, uh, get pit our wits against the best in the world over there. And I think we've just got as good a trainers here in England, in the UK, as there is in America. Some coaches tend to work with single fighters. You go the opposite. You've got a stable of great fighters. You know what is that about? Is that about having the time to do it, basically, down to each individual coach? Yeah, I, th I think so. One, listen, obviously the, the, the first thing is that they've asked me to train them and you've got to make sure you're fitting and giving them their own individual time. Uh, I'm very much, I was a big admirer of Manuel Stewart's Cronk Gym, Freddie Roach's Wildcard. I learnt my education in Champs Camp, Phil Martin, and that was very a team mentality. Uh, it was like the Cronk, it was Tommy Ernst, all that Milton McCrory. 
Champs Camp, John Stein, Morris Cole, Renzo Bingham, Frank Grant, Kyle Thompson, and to go to shows. And I like that mentality in the gymnasium. And it's the same with my fighters. You fight one of us, you fight all of us, and they're there pushing each other on. And say one day in the gym, Paul Smith doesn't feel like doing it in the bag. Scott Quigg will pull him through it. Another day, Crawler might not feel like it, but say Liam Smith will pull him through it. And that's the way it is. And they're going to work and they're working alongside talented fighters and watching talented fighters all the time. And I think just to go to the gym, not criticizing it, just one on one. I'd get bored of one-on-one -on -one with a kid for four or five years. It'd just be monotonous and there only could be so much banter and crack. But like you say, each to their own. And what we've got seems to be working. Long may it continue. Um, if you were to name two other trainers in the UK other than yourselves as the top two trainers, who would you say they were? Ingalls. And Jimmy Tibbs. If there was two fighters from the past that you could have trained of your choice whoever it was who would it be in the UK anywhere oh um, that's a hard one for you going hard one of my choice uh, that I would have liked to have trained oh I don't know Hunnigan's in there I, 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 although he beat me here or Donald Curry I'd like to have trained Donald Curry really my style of fighter good counter puncher good selective shots this is Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali, they trained themselves, didn't they? I'd like to have trained Ricky Hatton when he came back. Uh, I really wanted that job and I thought I could have done a good job with him and uh, I would have liked to have uh, got the opportunity and I, I think I would have done a good job with him and I think that's something that an opportunity missed and I think if we would have got him, I think Ricky Hatton would have won that fight. Just finally, for any aspiring young coaches out there, what would be your advice to them into getting a a footstep into the boxing world to make themselves seen or known? Listen, boxing, to be a, 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 a trainer or a good trainer, you've got to be, in my eyes, I want it sometimes more than the fighters. And that's wrong in a sense, but the fighters feel that from me. You've got to be very selfish. You've got to commit your life to it. It's not a job. It's not something part-time you can do. It's a lifestyle and you have to sacrifice your going outs, uh, sacrifice family time, you've got to sacrifice a lot of stuff and that's what I've done and people just see you popping up on a Saturday night in a corner but the work and the sacrifice that you put in, it's a very selfish business and you have to sacrifice everything and give all your time to all your fighters and that's all I can say, prepared because you won't have a life, boxing will be your life and it is a lifestyle.